Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. And I'd like to thank our MC for the nice introduction. But I'm just going to give a little more in-depth introduction into our panelists, very inspiring individuals in their own right, just so you can give some context to our speakers today and uh, their very insightful thoughts on today's topic. So I'll start with Ayman here. In the very monopolized world of social media, Ayman decided to create a social network called Vero, which launched in 2015. And up till today, it's got over about 6.5 million users. And what I've noticed Ayman talking about when it comes to Vero, which is very interesting, is the focus is not so much on the software and feature, features, that's very much there, but content creators are very much at the heart of uh, Vero. And he's got a very interesting strategy about how uh, he's planning to go about that soon, which we'll talk about very uh, in a little bit. My, our next panelist, I don't know if I need to introduce him, but I will anyway, Mr. Casper Lee. Casper Lee was a YouTube sensation uh, over a decade ago. He had started with millions of followers. He went from being a YouTube star to becoming a serial entrepreneur and investor. And Casper has now, is now the co-founder of a global influencer marketing business. And he's also the co-founder of a venture capital firm, uh, Creator Ventures. Our next panelist, Henry, is the CEO of WeMade. And basically, everyone, Henry built a gaming empire on blockchain technology. So basically, the game Legend of Mir features a play and earn concept. And any gamers here know the play and earn concept very well. But what WeMade has done is that this play and earn concept is on WeMade's own blockchain platform called WeMix. And just to give you an idea, in just a few months after they announced this, they garnered 6.5 million active monthly users on the platform. So we have a great mix of panelists here who are going to discuss media, culture, and fintech. And we will be discussing how millions of audiences of content creators can be turned into uh, business. So Ayman, I'm going to start with you here. We're talking about business. Vero is a ad-free and a free app, and you have constantly said that the creators are at the heart of uh, the Vero app. But what I wanted to ask you is, since the app is free and it's ad-free, how do you monetize on that to make sure that your business has enough revenue to be uh, self-sustaining? Yeah, so uh, since day one, we've said that um, the app will be a subscription app. So our, our main business model is subscription. We haven't turned subscription on yet. Um, we plan on doing so uh, in, two, in 2024. And we're linking it with this uh, big move that we've made recently, uh, which is uh, buying our own stock exchange. So we've, we've purchased our own um, stock exchange for tokenized securities. And we plan on allowing content creators to gain access to the equity of our platform, because ultimately, they're the ones that bring the most value to the platform. Users, uh, the community, our customers, bring the revenue to our platform. And so we want to reward them by giving them access to the equity in the platform. Um, since 2015, I have been funding the company in order to make sure that we stay true to the original premise which is to create an alternative social platform that isn't based on the attention economy, that isn't based on ads, we're not working for a third party, we're working for our users who are ultimately our customers, whether they're paying or not. Casper, you've been on both sides of the coin and Ayman is talking about equity here. When yeah. you were a content creator over a decade ago, do you wish that you had this option? Are you convinced by this strategy yeah. that I'm talking about? I mean, equity um, is very helpful for building long-term wealth and a sustainable business. So I think, you know, as a creator, I didn't actually start in 2010 knowing that there would even be money in this industry. I did it because I just love making content. And I think that's how a lot of creators start. But over time, they realize um, that there is a certain lifespan of a creator and you, you know, certain creators can make a lot of money from doing brand deals. A lot of, made, a lot of creators can make a lot of money doing subscription-based services. Um, but what a lot of people and creators today are inspired by from previous celebrities, people like 50 Cent who invested in vitamin water or got equity in it for doing something, um, or seeing what Kim Kardashian has done with like Skims and so on. 
I think a lot of creators today, if you look on their Instagram profiles, they're a co-founder of something. Yes. Um, it's almost, you know, you, you, you're not a creator until you're a co-founder. And what I love about uh, what Eamon's doing is um, that he's allowing their audiences to become shareholders in their ideas. Yeah, and how, how do you think that millions of audiences, because content creators have millions of followers, how do you think since you've been on both sides of things now with your um, influencer.com company helping these creators, how do you help them monetize on that? So yeah, we help, at influencer.com, we help creators monetize by working with brands. Um, but you know, creators don't only monetize through that. They also monetize through subscription and um, uh, they can also monetize through building their own businesses, which is what I think uh, you're gonna be able to help, uh, you know, connect the audience to be able to help be part of that funding journey. I, I think that there'll, you know, there'll all be, always be a difference between a professional investor who's investing in a startup and an audience member who's just a big fan and wants to own a little bit of that startup. But I think both have an exciting place in the ecosystem. Okay, and Henry, this is an interesting side of the conversation here because if we're talking monetizing, the um, global gaming market this year is at over $250 billion uh, in value. But to me, and correct me if I'm wrong here, I feel like the culture and the the gamers themselves are what make this industry uh, so successful. You have all over the world about 3.2 billion people play games. Um, so when you uh, started We Made and Legend of Mir the game, were you sort of banking on this culture of gamers or were you more on the software side of things to make this a successful company and game? Oh, yeah. Uh, monetization is uh, one of the core fundamental and basic elements in gaming. Uh, every gamer uh, can buy items from game developers and they, they buy and sell game items with each other. So every game has uh, in their economy, in their games. But traditional games, the monetization and the economy is within the game. It is contained in the game. But by blockchain technology, the in-game economy can be extended to the real economic value. You mentioned the middle four. Middle four is we launched the, the game in 2021, two years ago. It is the most successful blockchain game ever. It earns $20 million per month. Its uh, registered users is around 100 million users. Uh, wow. it, it can be made the, the huge success by combining blockchain technology and tokenization into the game to extend the boundaries of game economies to the real, real value. And did you feel that the gamer community that is playing this game really reacted to this technology? Did you see a difference in your uh, revenues and amount of users? Sure, sure. Uh, Mirpur is a traditional Korean MMORPG based on the uh, 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 Korean tradition. So, so many countries, uh, they, they don't understand the, this culture, but they respond to the blockchain technology and tokenomics. We, 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 we conclude that. So uh, by combining technology and uh, token, token, tokenomics, gaming games can be more enjoyable. And we're talking technology here. Ayman, you mentioned using Web3 enabled stock exchange. Tell us more about how this helps Vero and how you came up with that. Well, a stock exchange uh, essentially is always a walled garden. When you have uh, securities traded on a, on a particular exchange, those securities remain on that exchange. But what Web3 allows you to do is add a layer of um, being able to prove your ownership, which then leads to things like utility that you can add to that ownership. And uh, so imagine a situation where you own, um, let's say, one share in something, and that affords you uh, a thank you from the, the issuer or, or uh, the gaming company, et cetera. But if you own 100 or 1,000 shares and you can prove that, you can start to unlock different uh, utility according to the, the circumstances. And what Web3 allows you to do is make that, um, that ownership and the proof of ownership portable outside of the platform. Mm -hmm. So when you own a, a, an asset within one uh, platform, Web3 en enables that portability outside in other venues, whether physical or digital. And in the case of the stock exchange, which remains a separate company, although we bought it 
um, and it's, it's been acquired by Vero, it is um, a regulated exchange. And so the, the interface between that regulated exchange and Vero itself, the social network, will be using Web3, so using the wallet. So it's very so, similar to what Henry was saying. There's an in-game economy. Absolutely. And in your case, the in-platform, let's call it. And then you're giving a way to see this in the real world, see this revenue in the real world. Is yeah, that what you're saying? It's, a, it's a protocol that then, let's say one day you could own uh, shares in a football team, for example, on our tokenized exchange. You can interface with that football team on Vero, the social network, but you can also load up your wallet, go on a website of that football team and have access to an experience there. Yeah. Go to the stadium, have uh, unlock, whether it's um, you know, a, a discount or something else on, uh, in that stadium. So Web3 is a technology that we really believe in because it, it allows for this portability of that ownership that then can unlock utility in other places. And Casper, I want your inputs here because you know you have platforms like YouTube, like Instagram, like Facebook, they've been around for a while and maybe haven't had this strategy per se, it's pretty new. I think you would be the first who would um, uh, execute that. But they have been successful in their own right and you have found success on those platforms. So do you think with what Eamon is saying and we can tie it into what uh, Henry was saying, that this will, um, motivate content creators to then move to these platforms? Will it make them more successful over the success that we're already seeing from them? Is that enough? Yeah. So I think, I think those original platforms um, are a place creators go to, not because they just like the branding of YouTube, but because that's where the audience is. And so creators will usually go to the platforms where they can acquire the audience, and then they'll also use other platforms to help monetize that. Um, so, for example, a lot of YouTubers also use Patreon. If you can combine those two things, I think that's very powerful. Um, Henry, I want to go back to the blockchain bit. Um, how profitable has it been? And explain to me more of, like, we can elaborate on what Ayman was saying, how the in-game economy works for We Made and for Legend of Mir, and how this is translated in the real world. Uh, the profits uh, by blockchain technology and tokenomics can be shared among the older parties. First, game players uh, get have their ownership of the assets within the game, which they uh, make by their time and resources. So they can uh, trade the items within from the games to the real, in the real, real world value to other games. So the first, Profit uh, was given; it can be given to the gamers. And second, uh, the blockchain technology and tokeno tokenomics can make the games more enjoyable. More enjoyable, enjoyable games can make more, more users, and more users can make the companies uh, more profitable, more profit. So, the game developers can more profit by using the blockchain technology. And third one is the platform. Uh, as you mentioned, that we are operating our own blockchain game platform called Remix. It is the uh, number one blockchain game platform now. We have the most successful blockchain game ever called Middle Four Global, and we have the most games on our platform, around 50 games, and we are adding two or three games every week. And as for the uh, gaming platform, you, you, you think about that the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Their combined revenue of the platform uh, using gaming uh, is over the 100, 100 billion US dollars. So, but they are distributing platform to distribute the games and we are a different layered platform and so we are compatible with them. And at the end of the day, uh, if one platform, one blockchain game platform is dominant, their profit uh, will be more than that. We're talking technology here, and, and Casper, you've always talked about that, you know, uh, in yesterday's panel, AI cannot replace content creators because people always want to know the story behind the person who's creating this content. And Ayman, on your application, it's all about the niche community of artists and music and, you know, going back to the, the core of what content creator, uh, creation is about. Now, we've spoken about monetizing, and it seems that there's, you know, technologies being used in that regard, but 
are you worried that the essence of content creation you know, is on the line here a little bit? And as we were just speaking, not any content creator can be used for you know, promoting a gaming platform. Not any content creator can be used for you know, an NFT or, or promoting something specific. It has to be true to them yeah. themselves. So just talk to us about your yeah. view on that as a content. I think when we, we talk about content creators, we think of them as a particular type of person. But it's basically just a distribution channel for all sorts of different creatives, athletes, professionals, just educators. And so I think the, the, the you know, certain people who are maybe there just to be super creative um, and all they care about is the art of their work, the whole idea of this, you know, talking about money so much and the monetization aspect, that might not interest them. But then you'll have other creators who maybe their role is literally to teach others how to create money or build money on the internet. They'll love this kind of stuff. So I do think it depends on, on who you speak to. Ultimately, though, if, if I'm going to advise someone to be, you know, someone says, I want to become a creator, I think it's one of the most sought after jobs for young people in the world. I would say that don't put money as the first reason for doing this because 99.9% .9 of yeah. you will fail before you get to a place where you can make a lot of money. But if you're doing it for the fun, you might push through that failure to a point where you can actually monetize. I mean, do you have a plan on Vero since you're putting a strategy in place where the content creators can get equity? Do you fear that they may turn into what, you know, Casper is saying that money is first and, you know, the content will be not as, as good, basically? <laughs> the, the best regulators for that are the, is the audience. And um, fans know when they're either somebody's trying to take advantage of them or if the, the creator that they're following is, is just basically looking for some way of just making money and that's it. And, and uh, you know, history has shown the successful creators uh, from, from the ones who maybe start off being successful and then become unsuccessful or the ones that, that don't succeed from day one. I think at the end of the day, what we want to, what we want to do is we want to level the playing field. Creators are always looking at platforms uh, as a means of distribution and then tacking on other means of making money. They bring their own monetization strategies to the table. And what we want to do is it's okay to bring, you know, even on Vero, uh, a sponsor to your content, and that's fine. Uh, but at the end of the day, you're bringing a lot of value, even on the platform itself. And there is a huge difference um, between the equity value and the, the money that you're getting from a sponsor, from AdSense, all of this stuff. It, it pales in comparison. And having access to equity, I think, over the long term, allows you to get off of that hamster wheel. You can get on it for a particular purpose, but then you allow for a longer term um, return for the time that you've spent on the platform. And the earlier that you come on and the more nascent the platform, the more value you're bringing, the more value you get over the long term. That is, the, that is what we're after. And I think all of the, the, the stuff around technology, AI, all of these things, as long as we always keep in mind for creativity, for authenticity to be in the front seat and technology to be in the back seat. Because whenever we reverse that, we always find ourselves getting into trouble. Yeah. Technology should serve us. We, sh we should be in the driver's seat. People with their creativity, with their fans, with their audience, with their authenticity, with whatever is the objective, that should be in the front seat. And technology should be in the back seat, allowing us to get there. I think we can end on that note. We can agree that content creation needs to be at the core of anything you do in business. And it's people like you that pave the way to just have the content creators go in the right direction and make some money out of it, which is <laughs> always nice. Thank you very much, everyone, for following this panel. Very insightful, I must say.